Hi everyone. Um, hopefully you can hear me, it's Matt, just off camera. I think we've got Ben Ransom, uh, who will kick us off from Sky, and then we'll go through, if you want to use the hands up mechanism, I'll get to as many as you we possibly can, but Ben, if you'd like to take the first two, and then we'll round everyone else. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, Jürgen, congratulations today. Um, what's the most pleasing aspect of that? The win, the scoreline, the quality of the goals? Oh, um, it was a little bit interrupted. I'm not sure if that's a technical problem or you just stopped talking. <laughs> um, everything is pleasing. Everything is good um, about this game. Um, overcoming difficult problems in the first half with counter attacks, um, fighting really hard to, to avoid there. Um, goal and on the other side, really top football, top finishing, keeping the ball uh, in the right way, using the positioning, filling the just match plan with life. And um, boys did really well. It was really difficult to play against us today, I would say. And then when you have obviously today, they all wore their finishing boots, uh, it looked like. And when you have them, that's really tricky. And so that's the reason for the result that that's, that uh, didn't happen for us before. But unfortunately, not happened a lot. But it's a funny season. Uh, we lost 7 2. Now we, lost, we won 7 0. At least we could cancel out a little bit this, this um, the, the goal difference. You mentioned the 7 2. Also, you've had to battle some big injuries this year, and yet you're going to be top of the league at Christmas for the third season in a row. How satisfying are you with where you are right now as you try and defend this title? I don't, I don't feel satisfaction or whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm happy in the moment, absolutely, because it was just a, a top game. But the time is just like this. It makes no sense to be over the moon about something because the the the. The problem gets smaller. I don't say the problems, the challenges get don't get smaller. It's just um, yes, the first time now for feels like ages that we don't play on Tuesday immediately again. Um, I think Crystal Palace felt today a little bit how hard it is to play Wednesday night and then on Saturday twelve thirty immediately again. It's tough. It was for us tough as well, um, and so. I don't think really about being top of the table or whatever. We're just happy that we won the game, uh, that we have now time to recover, more time to recover than we ever had before in this season, and that we have to use that in a smart way. And then West Brom is waiting with Sam Allardyce, um, and the next um, proper challenge is there. Thank you. Okay, guys, I'm going to go to the hands up first, which I think Gene Sylvester's next, um, and then we'll go for Hidia. Uh, as well, but if you can use the hands up, guys, we're going to go to people, that'd be great. Uh, but um, Gene Sylvester first. Hi, Jürgen. Um, it's Gene Sylvester here from the Morning Star. Um, now, I just wanted to, to get your views on whether you think you've really hit a, a rhythm now uh, due to a more settled team. Um, obviously, with all the injuries at the beginning of the season, obviously, you had to find a, a new blend with the defence and so on and so forth. Do you believe now you're finding a, a more settled selection that is um, allowing you to find more rhythm? Um, we deal the whole season already only with the, with the circumstances. I don't mean now, now I'm not mean COVID now, I mean really the injuries and stuff like this. So you cannot prepare for that. You just have to sort these kind of problems. Um, uh, yeah, I know we had a lot of a lot of problems and it's all about, I mean, it, when it's once started, then it just leads to the next problem. That means you have a player less on seven and a half and a week later, another one has to play seven times in a row, which because nobody else was fit and all these kind of things, the young kids were not ready. And these things you know, that leads just, it, it doesn't stop. So in a moment, it's just one hour now after the game where we just think, okay, it's fine. But from tomorrow on, we try to prepare all the different scenarios again and 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 do what we have to do to make sure that we will uh, uh, will put will win football games in in end of December. Obviously, it's not a game, and then in January, February, and so on as well. It's just it's tough, and nothing to be satisfied with or whatever. Thank you, um, Gene. We'll go to Hideo and then to Rob Harris from uh, AP. We haven't got any other hands up after that. So, but Hideo first, then Rob Harris. Hi, Jurgen. Uh, you have been using Taki in midfield recently, but uh, does today's performance show that he's more suited to play up front? And, and ideally, do you want to use him up front rather than in midfield? First of all, um, we want to use Taki. So that's it. And the way we play, we need um, um, 
if you play for us in midfield, you need to be um, an offensive. You need to have offensive skills as well. So means Taki can play there. Played it twice, played good. Even more important in training, he looked really sharp, really in good shape. That's why he was why he why we pl he played today. Um, played a top game today. Uh, nice finish um, and just is is a good moment. Yeah? So that's that's what we want to use. And I saw him in the dressing room now, and he was um, couldn't avoid, avoid smiling all over his face. So it's um, it's it's a good moment. He he's in a really good place and um, helps us a lot. Thank you. So, Rob Harris, and this will be the last question, unless anyone else puts their hands up on the uh, the system on the right-hand side. Rob Harris. Uh, hi, Jürgen. Uh, Merry Christmas. I'm sure you were pleased, obviously, to rack up that big score in the first, particularly without Mo. What was the thinking for not starting Salah? And had you taken into account the interview that was published, sort of maybe talking about a move to Spain, potentially, or um, not having the captaincy as well? Hey. What was... Oh. I, I'm not sure I understand everything. So, what was the plan with him not starting? That's easy. Um, it's just a, I think it's the first time for a while that we had the opportunity to do something like this. We, we needed, we, it was clear after we played Sunday, Wednesday. So, we needed fresh legs today. So, Joel could come in, Nabi could come in. And then we had to think about how, how can we deal with that in the first line. And um, Mo played the last four games, I think just seven. It's just only seven minutes from the last four games. It's a massively intense period. So it was clear it will be him. And then usually you would expect in a game like this against Crystal Palace, the last the recent results again between us and them were always pretty tight, close. So um, bringing him um, in the last half an hour, I thought it's a good idea. We did that, by the way, um, but it was not exactly the scenario we, we would have expected, of course. So that's it. And did you see the comments he said in the Spanish interview about not having the captaincy against Mitterland? A bit unhappy with that and suggesting he, he would be open to moving to Spain one day. <laughs> oh, nothing to say from my side about that. All fine. Okay. Uh, we'll go to Ivan Speck from the Irish Examiner. And I think that's it. All, that's what I can see for hands up. So Ivan to finish first. Sorry, Ivan. I think you're on mute. If you can take it off mute, and then we can uh, we can hear your question. Sorry about that. Hi. Yeah. Um, bringing, bringing Salah on. Some people might have thought it was a risk. You were four 0 up, but everything seemed to work today. Which is one of those days, I guess. Yeah. Well, I said it was a good day. I mean, didn't have a lot of struggles first half. Is the the the, the counter takes they had. We defend that. As far as I know, nobody picked up any injuries or not little or bigger ones. And I hope that's um, still the case when I arrive again in the dressing room. Um, no, apart from that, really one of the bad days in our life. And um, we will take that with us, try to recover and go again. And this is the very last question for us, which is Daniel Matthews, and then we'll uh, we'll depart the press conference. Daniel. Hi, oh, yeah, can you hear me? Um, yeah. Um, you mentioned obviously the turbulence of this year and, and all the injuries, but this feels like a, a statement victory. How much more from your side with the players coming back and using the extra break? How much more from your side do you feel there is to come? <laughs> I don't think that's. That we, that we have to make this kind of uh, prediction that uh, how much more we come after a 7 0. So we have to, as a, if you want to reach whatever in this league uh, or in football in general, you have to be really consistent. And you have to, for, for being consistent, you need options. So when um, Jose Mourinho said before our game, we played against Tottenham, that, we, that only two or three players are not involved, and all the rest is um, on the pitch for our game from, I don't know, from the league winners. He was actually right. The problem is only that these players had to play like 80-90% um, of the games of the final season. So that's more our problem. So far, we always could bring a really good team on the pitch. That's what we yes, filled up with, with really sensationally talented boys. Uh, that's what, what really helps. Um, but it's just that's the, the majority of the season is still to come. So it's not about how much more we can do. We just have to be ready on each match day to find a way
to win this specific game. And um, that's not decided that if we will do that, we are we, we, we will try it with all we have. But um, yeah, we will see later on this season. Thank you very much, everyone. That's us. And uh, have a safe journey home and speak to you soon. Thanks, boss. That's us. That's us. Have a nice Christmas. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.